Christ's sake, I've been at this for weeks and it still ain't open. Gotta find another way in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Morgan and bid you all welcome back to Gothic 2. Before we begin, wanted to bring up something that I actually missed in the last episode. I meant to go over or just show. Um, Garaz, one of the bandits who uh, encouraged us to take out uh, Bloodwind. He actually has a bit of dialogue about the uh, ore veins, the gold veins that we saw all along the ceiling in that new mine where we wiped out all the mine crawlers. I'd mentioned it before, but never actually showed it, so, uh, well, here it is. Hey. Wow, man, there sure is a lot of gold here. To get the junks up there, we'd actually need a ladder. But since the fall of the barrier, nobody's been using ladders anymore. It's really too bad. So it's just a cute little remark on uh, the fact that the second game never had ladders, even though the first game did. I think mostly because of how glitchy they were. But, uh, kind of, if you don't get that reference, it doesn't really make sense, the idea that the entire world suddenly stopped using ladders after the barrier fell. But anyway, before we go any further, one thing we definitely want to check out is this chest here. Which, no luck, but it has the Armor of Raven's Guard. It's actually the same armor that Bloodwind, Thoris, and all these elite guards around here are wearing. So, quite spiffy. And yes, you finally get to wear the Heavy Guards armor since it was denied to us in Gothic 1. It's also the best armor we have right now, so we're going to be wearing it quite a bit. But unfortunately, being a bandit armor, even though I don't know who, who the hell expects to see a bandit wearing this, um, it does make NPCs hostile back in Corinus. Now, I think I said the last episode I was going to run and get more storm spells, but I decided against that. Because I'm only really going to use a couple here. Although... I might end up using exactly as many as I have. But anyway, I'm going to use one, one of them here. We only need to keep one for the sake of... Learning the scroll, uh, learning the rune. So these assholes... They're just close enough to hit us, which is unfortunate. Somehow that guy got one shot with it. I don't understand how. A bunch of Raven's henchmen. They're all soulless minions. Zombified. And they're all wearing this armor. Nothing there. You know, considering how much time Bloodwind spends in here, surely he uh, saw what the became of these guys. You would think he would start to question his loyalty to... Raven, but I guess Greed won out in the end. Perhaps these guys just weren't loyal enough. I assume nobody else but Bloodwind's really allowed in here, that's why nobody noticed. Oh, one thing I gotta remember to do, the last few episodes I noticed have been a bit dark. So I gotta brightness balance these interior shots a bit better. Because I don't mind it in-game, it's atmospheric, but it's hard to watch and I understand that much. A scroll here of destroy undead or summon a skeleton, I forgot. Anyway. So, unfortunately we have not been able to pursue Raven into the temple. So we gotta go back and debrief with Satyrus and figure out what the hell we're gonna do. We're actually going to take Bloodwind's head back. I want to demonstrate what I said in the last episode on what happens to this if we wait a little while. I think it's once we en enter Chapter 5 it changes. Uh, there's definitely a bed in one of these. But before we leave, I want to take care of a few things here. A quick nap. Now, we got... Thoris to agree to let the slaves go. Because, I guess... I don't know. Thoris it seems to have a bit of honor about him, even though he's always served uh, major assholes. But I think he just kind of understands a certain extent of abuse is just going to come with the territory of the... Uh, Society's a company he, he keeps. He doesn't really uh, have any way around that. But when he has a choice, I guess he 
tends to take the uh, higher ground. Let the slaves go. Do you have any say? I talked with Thoris. He ordered the slaves to be set free. Okay, if Thoris ordered it, but I have to ask myself why he decided on something like that. But you aren't being paid to ask questions. All right, all right. I'm obviously not needed here anymore, so I'll go get me some stew. You get yourself some stew. Seems like your job has been made obsolete, my friend. And yeah, Val pointed out in the last episode, uh, there's... In... Uh, tight areas like this cave. Uh, these interior cells, where they mesh together, messes with the sound in a way I don't think they anticipated. Uh, it, it seems weird that they actually programmed um, the way the sound comes from the characters and that it actually gets... Uh, the volume mixes down when they're further away from you. But... Yeah, the, the way they do it is that each sort of connection between the interior, between these boundaries, um, will cause the... If you're on separate sides of it, it can cause that to get quieter. I think it's just a way the camera like, kind of goes around the corner of the walls and stuff. Hey. But it makes things sound weird. All's well. You can make yourselves scarce. Great. I know a cave in a swamp where we can gather for now, but then what? Leave the swamp towards the southwest. The water mages have set up their camp near the ruins of the old temple. They're going to show you the way out of this valley. Thanks, thank you so much. We're all very deeply... Uh... Never mind. Uh, I want to be thanked. God. Can't just dismiss all the praise on our behalf. So yeah, all the slaves hit the road, and now all these lazy uh, bandito diggers going to have to get to work, although only one of them really seems to have taken up the pick, as it were. Before we head on, I have to hey, you. trade in all my nugs. Let's trade. So 4550, that's a some total I was able to get after we cleared out um, this passage down here as well. I feel like in the past I used to get less than that. So, I still am not 100% on what randomizes or what parameters really define how much you get. There clearly seems to be some randomness to it. Perhaps my friend Vana can figure it out. On that note, my friend Vana has actually um, released a video on an interesting subject. So, if you uh, a gothic related subject, if you're interested in that. I think I will share it in a pinned comment, just so it's more visible. I haven't actually watched it myself at this point, because I got home, I want to do this. I want to make sure I can pay attention to it. Um, it's only subtitled in English right now. That, uh, steams your onions, but... So, before these slaves are actually able to leave, we have to meet them out here. Um, what's his name? Patrick just said he knew of a cave out here. We actually know where that cave is. It's the cave where Tom's hiding out near where... The hell's his name? Logan was watching for swamp sharks. Don't know why they couldn't just leave. But they won't go back to the water mages or return to Corinus until we talk to them out here. It's not really clear on that matter. I don't know which quest it is. I thought it was called The Missing People, but... Yeah, it's right here. So it acts like we've already finished it, but it just ends. But there's more to be done, so if you don't know these guys are out here, it might be hard to really know that you need to talk to them. And for some reason, Patrick takes up a uh, position right next to Tom, but speaking of Tom, he's probably interested to hear the good news. Esteban is dead. Really? Man, that's lucky. Who did it? 
let's just say someone you know. Well, I assume he knows coming everybody coming here. Me. Now I can go back to the camp. You're welcome. Don't you want to leave? Of course we do. We're only waiting for the right moment. That is my mistake. I just lied to you all. You don't actually need to talk to them here. They just stayed here because they can't really go through the area transition right away. I think they hang out here until you deal with Raven. I actually have never checked to see exactly when they leave, but I don't think you can just go back to Grinnis and find them there. Typically that's what happens because um, NPCs can't really cross boundaries before you do. That's why when we um, got back from the valley, Diego sat and waited on that one side of the pass until we went through. Bilgot presumably would do the same thing, but Bilgot never actually appears in Corinus. Which is a shame. I went through so much effort on his account. There's actually another character later who does the same thing. But I don't... Actually... Maybe I could test it. I'm gonna keep a save just for testing's sake. I gotta remember that I'm doing two other playthroughs of this, but none of them really have anything new happening here. I'm just gonna save over this backup. Just remind myself to test whether or not the slaves will go when we go through the portal, or if they wait until we deal with Raven. Cause that's more effort than I'm willing to put into on screen right now. But if I do figure it out before I edit this video, then I will put a little subtitle at the bottom. How about that? And Sadder, so why you gotta always be up the stairs? I had to take such a hike here. You couldn't have been lower. Made it easier for me to talk to you. Hey. About Raven. I made my way into Raven's quarters. And? What about Raven? I came too late. He disappeared into the Adonis Temple right before my eyes. What? That is a catastrophe. Why didn't you follow him? I couldn't follow Raven. He blocked the entrance from inside. I must think. The question is, how did Raven get into the temple? And what did he do before he passed through the portal? He spoke an incantation at the gate. And before that? He opened a burial chamber. I already told you about that. Right. A ritual. Yes, that's it. I fear that Raven has made the power of the Guardians of the Dead his own. He got his knowledge of the temple from a spirit. You must go to Mixier and tell him about this. About the relics. What about this? That looks good. Where'd you find that? The bandits use these stone tablets as a sort of currency. The tablets bear the sign of Korhodren, a great warrior. He is the commander whose son Rodimus caused the downfall of the entire city. I'll bet the bandits don't even know what it is they are trading there. This thing was lying in a building near the Great Swamp. That would have been the House of the Healers. We don't know much about them. They seem to have been the first to disappear. Very good. The image of this city is becoming clearer, but we still don't know enough. In all, there must be five of this sort of stone tablet hidden around here. Find them and bring them to me. Here is some gold as a reward. I'll see whether I can find anything. Good, but hurry. Time is not our ally. Oh, we got a few more mansions to find. Why do you need these five stone tablets? The records which we have been able to find in this ruin are incomplete, but the writings of the builders speak of five rulers who ruled this city. Each of these rulers had one of these tablets as a symbol of his power. I think these tablets are the key to our questions. Now I'm going to go into the confusing nature of these tablets later on, but that quote right there is what confuses me the most. Uh, just going by the t supposed timeline of events here, May Adonos Everything we see later implies that these tablets were made after the downfall of the city, so how could they have had these tablets 
as a symbol of their power. It doesn't really make any sense. I think that's a line that they just kind of threw in there to explain, like, why they are where they are and why there are exactly five of them. But it really doesn't add up. Now, we already wanted to hear hey, about the mansions you. as well. Uh, about the mansions? Yes. The House of the Healers is in the middle of the swampy area and is defended by many stone sentinels. So it is still standing? Yes, but I wonder for how much longer. It pains my soul to see the witnesses of the past in this dilapidated condition. The mansion of the warriors is being used by Raven as a hideout. He made a good choice. It is probably the most secure fortress still to be found in this region. I'm curious how you know about that, because you've never been over there. You can't speak to its condition. I've activated another one of the teleporter stones. Give me the next focus. Of course. Here it is. Here are a few gold coins. Why, thanks. We only got one teleporter left, but uh, I had to make sure I grabbed that because I forgot to when we activated the bandit camp one. Anyway, mix here. I heard about a ghost. Saturus sent me. Raven has made his way into the temple and blocked the portal from the inside. Saturus thinks Damn, he got that was his ominous. information about the temple from a ghost. By Adonis, he must have summoned the high priest Cardamon to ask him about a way into the temple. According Cardamon? According to the records, his grave was in the caves under the fortress. You will have to do the same, but you cannot ask Cardamon anymore. The grave of the warrior prince Quahodron is supposed to lie in the west of the valley. You will have to find it and waken Quahodron. It is written in these inscriptions how a believer of Adonos can summon a spirit. Do you think that'll really work? I've read a lot of crazy ramblings. For example, the writings of Iberian, the leader of the Brotherhood of the Sleeper. But I believe every word of the author of these writings. The Brotherhood of the Sleeper didn't spread just lies. The Sleeper really existed. But it wasn't their lies that made them implausible. It was their words as such. They were more confusing than believable. They showed the excessive use of the swamp weed they smoked. It is the seriousness and prudence in the words on this stone tablet that convinced me that this man wrote the truth. Why Quahodron? Why not the High Priest Cardamon? Raven has desecrated the grave of Cardamon with his summoning. We can assume that. We shall have to look for another spirit. No cardamom in our spice rack, then. Are you really serious? I want to explore every possibility. Even if there is only a ghost of a chance for us to meet one of the builders, then we have to do it. Raven has managed to do it, after all. Assuming I want to summon this ghost, what do I have to do? Find Quarhodron's grave in the west of the valley. His ghost can be summoned by the words of the Guardians of the Dead, which I have written for you here. That's all. Now you just have to find the grave. Good luck, my son. What was that again about the warrior Prince Quarhodron? You have to find his grave and summon his ghost with the words of the Guardians of the Dead. I have written the words down. You just have to read them aloud. I don't know when they called him a warrior prince. I don't think anything in the rest of the lore calls him a prince, so... Just another bit of confusion for us. Ighoriat Thorol. Appear to me, Quorhodron, ancient leader of the warrior caste. Hmm, that doesn't work here. Doesn't work here. Wonder why there's no translations of those first two words. The idea that we can speak the rest of it in plain English, and it still makes sense when, wow, the recording is taking a nosedive. It's weird to see this game running 60 FPS on my end, but see the recording is going apeshit. So, we got three destinations for the mansions, but we want to figure out what's what we can learn from this Quahodron fellow first. And... We don't have a whole lot of clear direction on that. But it is not difficult to find. I like to go this way because there is something nice to find behind the wall here.
You know, I have a note. Uh, I usually take notes before recording these episodes, and uh, one note I accidentally just glossed over is that I wanted to talk to Scatty on the way out of the mine. He's actually got a bit of a um, bit of extra dialogue, but I forgot what it is, and I forgot to ask him. Yeah, there's a fire rain spell here, so always good to grab those when we find them. Now, I want to give you a bit of warning in advance. There's a black goblin here. But that's not what I am warning you about. Over there. You see a little hut there. I think I mentioned it before. There's a single character on this part of the island who will react to you wearing the bandit clothes. And he is the one. So you are going to want to take off the armor when you get close. Just a little heads up for you. I think most people following along with this walkthrough like this are... Most of people have played it before. You just want to hear... You know... Hear about things that they maybe missed in the past or don't really know about. Nothing to be had there. Well, before we head that way... This is actually our destination here, believe it or not. That quick. We got harpies. Oh, God. I don't think we've encountered harpies yet. They're just as annoying as they were in the first game. But more importantly and more dangerously... There's a big old troll over there. He's gonna be one tough cookie, but actually I've learned... Fairly reliable way to deal with him. Okay, two harps. Why did that miss? Alright, well you suck. Boing. Well, that's not fair. Aha! All them wings and you still can't defeat gravity. So, the issue with the troll is that none of our spells really do much damage to him. I think Fire Rain. Fire Rain is a weird spell because it seems... Maybe I just misunderstand the damage calculation, but it seems to do a lot of damage. Like, compared to the 250 of the Storm spell, which barely scratches the fellow, I think Fire Rain could one-shot him. He doesn't react when the goblins take a hit, which is good. Well, come on then, dork. What? So, we don't need to worry too much about facing the troll head on because I learned that a singular skeleton actually holds up pretty well against these idiots. Really, all we have to do is pull aggro now and then. I know I said I don't really want to resort to melee as a mage. Hello! But, uh, I don't think this really counts. We're just, we're just playing to interference. But really, the skeletons can solo the troll. I mean, he took a direct punch to the face and barely even phased him. Actually, I should have kept him alive. There's another enemy. Right in here is a zomboy. One of them armored zomboys. Yeah, we're fine. 
Just a bit of a waste of mana. Left, right, right, left, right. Nothing to be had there. Doesn't carry anything, unfortunately, but take a close look at this fellow's armor. We've encountered one other uh, character, one other zombie with the same armor. I don't think his face lines up with uh, the theory that just dawned on me. Which is that he might actually be the, um, the reanimated corpse of Quarhodron, who is actually the interred in this tomb. But he... We also have a magic crossbow here. Now, we found the fire bow previously. Uh, that was in the... chest above Dexter in... in Dexter's lighthouse near Onar's farm. This magic crossbow has the same issue, which is that it can only use the magic quarrel. Which are specialty crossbow bolts. So, that means once you use those 10 coral, this magic crossbow becomes useless. But its damage for its strength requirement is substantial. I don't think a single crossbow in the game does more damage than this, but I will double check that. Uh, the other thing we found was a ring. A ring of the Wadiers. Was it? Or was it another priest ring? Um, so let's take a look here. We got 135 mana. If I take off this ring, I only have 10. If, if I put on the 2 plus 5 rings... What? Oh. Right. So, I have 130. And 35. How's that? 115. So if I put on two of these rings, add it together, they should only be 10, but it gives me 15. If we had the amulet, that would be plus 10, but I think another 5 for the set bonus. To give us a total of 30, for what should only be 20. No, I think it gives us... I don't remember. I'll figure it out. But yeah, so the... The rings and amulets of the three casts that we find here actually have a set bonus, which I never knew about. I believe Val told me about that. Um, so that took me by surprise when I learned that a couple years ago. Anyway, the last thing we gotta do is call the fella. Coriat Thoral. Appear to me, Quorhodron, ancient leader of the warrior caste. Uh, I think I could have left out everything after the first syllable because he answered as soon as you started talking. Engla Anthani Osiri. I don't understand. Engla Anthani. Beg your pardon? Well, shoot. Nobody ever, uh, thought to tell us how to talk to this ghost. It just taught us how to call him. So, yeah, that's one of the things that it mixes your omits, is that you actually need to learn his language. The interesting thing is that uh, we know there are three languages spoken by the people of this uh, land. The lowest language we'll learn is the language of the peasants. And that is all we need to learn, right? Right, right, left. Right, right, left, left. The language of the peasants is all we need to learn in order to uh, speak with Quarhodron. Even though the second language is actually the language of the warriors. You would think that's what he would be prepared, pre prepared to speak. But the highest language we'll learn is the language of the priests. Now, given that there are those three tiers of language, nobody really explains what the other four high castes really spoke. You would think that these... I can't remember. Is it the scholars or the priests who have the highest language? We'll find out. But, um... Don't really explain what the healers talk, what the guardians talk, anything like that.
So anyway. Before we head back to talk to Mixier, let's see who this fellow is chilling in this hut. One thing to be wary of. There's a fearsome beast around the corner here. Big ol' shadow beast just chilling under here. Oh, come on. That is not fair! I guess a little sideways... Sideways aim takes care of that. So if you want to, you can just ice block him. But that'll do the trick. Now, as I said, before we approach this hut, we want to switch off the armor. So we're going to switch to pirate armor. And here's the man himself. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? What the hell are you doing here? I came to the remotest spot on the island because I finally wanted some peace. Civil war? Bandit raids? Hordes of orcs outside my door? That just wasn't my thing. I've retired from that madness. There may be orcs here, but not very many. And other people, thank Enos, never show up here until today. Sorry to break the party. And? How's life as a dropout? I built everything myself. My weapons, my tools, my hut, everything. Came here with nothing but a good mood. Sometimes, though... Yes? Sometimes I wish I'd had at least taken a few clothes with me. I don't know how to weave or tan hides, and the nights aren't exactly warm in this part of the island. I have some clothes for you. Really? Show me. Let's see if they fit. So you have a few choices here. Basically, anything that isn't a faction-based armor, including the pirate armor, you can give to him. Now, the only reason to give him a more expensive armor is that it will, well, give him more defense, if that matters. But you can give him just the basic uh, citizen's clothes that we find early on. It's the only reason I kept this set this whole time. And you get the same amount of XP. They do! Well, what do I do now? I gave all my gold to the pirates for the crossing. All I can give you is a couple of old stone tablets. Here, take them. By all means, I'll, I'll look for some new ones. I don't remember which ones he gave us. I'll find that out later. And? How's life as a dropout? I manage. With clothes, I could get through the winter. After that, we'll see. Oh, you will see. I wonder how long this dude has been here. I'm searching for stone tablets. You wouldn't happen to have found any. Yes, but I'm keeping them. They're the only thing there is to read around here. I may not understand all of it yet, but I've been able to decipher some of the texts. So, he can actually teach you the language. Mixier uh, is the main one to teach you the language, but he can teach you the most basic ones. About the stone tablets, shall I teach you to read them? It's quite simple. A G is an O, a T is an H, and an I is a C. If you understand that, the rest is quite logical. Is it really? Because that makes no sense. I suspect that's just a kind of a joke cop-out answer, but the only reason I think he can teach you is the fact that it would be a long trek back to Mixier um, in order to learn the language, if not for the fact that the teleporter stone is right here. So I feel like throwing that away for a joke is kind of silly. So we're actually going to reload and learn it from Mixier because he has a bit more to elaborate on the nature of the language. And I don't want to miss out on that dialogue. But yeah, the Hermit can only teach you the peasant language. Also, when he mentions orcs, there's orcs on the bridge. And if you get too close, they will pursue you over here, likely getting this guy killed. I also find it funny that he mentions how he built all his own weapons, when the only weapon he has is a stick. Kind of easy to build a stick. Because you don't build one, you just pick it up. I've activated another one of the teleporter stones. You have done really well. I can only congratulate you on your work. 
They're all working again now. An impressive sight, don't you think? Here are a few gold coins. A few gold groins. So that's it for the teleporter stones. That's all the ones we can get. Let's find Mixier. You could have told me I needed to learn another language to speak to this ghost. Teach me that language. We'll start with something easy. To begin with, I can teach you the language of the peasants. As a rule, texts written in the language of the peasants deal with worldly matters such as work, love, or obtaining food. It was the common language of the city. You will be able to understand most of the text found here if you know it. Go and test your new knowledge. You will see that the scriptures of the builders are no longer an unsolvable mystery for you. So with that, we can learn all, we can read from all of the level one stone tablets that we have. Uh, which I'm not going to do because we're going to save these for later. You can if you want learn the ones for skills you don't need. They don't sell for very much. But learning them is kind of useless if we're never going to use that skill, so might as well sell them. But what we can do is read pretty much everything else, including these colored stone tablets. They all have interesting tips on them. We, the last three leaders of the Council of Five, have provided the chamber of the temple with traps and hidden the entrance so that the sword will never again see the light of day. I think that would be a great big tip for Satyrus, considering the revelation he has later. But apparently that wasn't enough for him. We can also read these. These kind of useless ones. The cast of the warriors called down the wrath of our god. Radamis, the successor of Quarhodron, was banished. But his evil power reached us even from the place of his exile. We were powerless against it. Adnos's wrath struck Gerendar. They can't even spell their own city right, for Christ's sake. I have no idea who's responsible for that typo, but it's pretty hilarious. Anyway, other than orcs, there's uh, some more interesting enemies around here. You might have seen them in the background there. And let's top off. I think we're going to need all my spells. Over here... Grassland Scavenger. They make an interesting sound. Shit. That's fine. What? Get fuego. So these are an interesting enemy. From what my friend Vana tells me, these were actually an enemy in development for a sort of precursor uh, sequel for Gothic. Uh, which was actually an expansion for the first game that never never even got formally announced. But apparently he's, uh, through his sleuthing, was able to dig up some uh, files related to that project. And among other things were the original models for a sort of corrupted uh, scavenger, which apparently were almost identical to these grassland scavengers. So even the um, even the brand new enemies in uh, Jarkandar are more recycled than we even realized. And he's got these stupid. Well, those are just rocks. No idea why he's got rocks on his shelf. And one interesting sight around here. See this little land bridge? Also a campfire up there. No idea who's responsible for that and why it's been burning so long. But up here... There's an inexplicable shrine to Beliar. Guarded by a flank of skeletons. So if you are interested in selling your soul for a meager profit, well, here's the nearest place to do so. Left, 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 right, right, left, right. Mandible, old coin, life energy three. And over here, there are some snappers sniffing about, so let's clear those out. Am 
Remember, is there more than one? A lot of shadow beast hides around here. I'm curious about who the hell these skeletons were, because they were well armed. And that one was laid out as if he was... You know, in an open air burial. Oh. We found a, uh... A scroll of fear. Which is a hilarious spell to use... On this Quarhodron fellow. As someone taught me... During the live streams I did a couple of years back. Shit, I'm out of here. Really good time. So given that Mixir said the language of the peasants is actually the common language of the city, I guess it's just assumed that if you didn't speak the language of the warriors or the priests, you would just speak the common language. If you're a scholar, if you're a healer or whatever. And I guess if you knew the higher languages, you knew the lower languages and would speak those. It could also be that there are just three different written languages, but they're all kind of the same spoken language. Who knows? But, I don't know how we learn to speak it if we can learn to read it. Those aren't one and the same. Regardless. Why do you disturb my rest, Guardian? Tell me, what do you desire? The land is plagued by earthquakes. We must do something, or the entire island will sink into the sea. There is nothing left for us to do. The wrath of Adonis has fallen upon Jarkendar to punish the unbelievers. Someone has forced his way into the Temple of Atenos. Nonsense. I myself sealed the door. It is impossible to pass. Indeed. What is in the Temple of Atenos? My greatest sorrow. My greatest disappointment. Grant me access to the Temple of Adnos. The temple will remain closed for all eternity. Thus did we in the council decide. The praised wisdom of the ancestors is truly overwhelming. A man of your standing does not speak to me thus. I cannot free myself of the impression that you are not the one you pretend to be. If you require my aid, you must first prove yourself to me. Answer my question so that I may be sure that I do not reveal myself to strangers. I wasn't exactly pretending to be anyone, but sure, we'll play along. Ask away. I am Quahodron, the old warlord of Jakendar. That's not a question. You have woken me. To which caste of Jakendar do you belong? Well, only one of these answers really makes sense. The Guardians of the Dead. The abilities of a Guardian of the Dead would have allowed you to waken me, that is true. If you are truly the one you claim to be, you will be able to answer all of my questions. Except for one. Who once protected the people of Jarkandar from enemy attacks? Duh, I'm gonna say the scholars. He probably threw books at him. The warrior cast. Who can give me a direct order? Now this one doesn't come obviously, but uh... In a very religious society, I believe that the holy man supersedes the authority of the fighting man. The priests. Who brought the evil upon us? 
Now this takes a bit of memory from what other characters have been saying, mainly the water mages who mentioned that Quarhodron himself uh, brought the artifact that plunged the city into madness. And he is of the warrior caste, so... The warrior caste. Who has the final word in the Council of Five? Now, I gotta be honest, I'm not sure where we find this out. But... It comes up somewhere. It might be in the library in the canyon. So, this is one of those cases where you'd have an easier time, but... Truth be told, this puzzle isn't that difficult because anytime you fail, you can just restart it. The scholars. Who alleviates suffering and attends to the ill? Another question that kind of answers itself. The healers. Who seal the portal to guard the world from evil? Now, you may remember he said that we, can, we should be able to answer all his questions except for one. And the fact that this sub, this uh, quote changed, it's kind of a dead giveaway on that. I don't know. Good. I trust you and shall grant you my aid. Now another thing my friend Val told me is that that line is actually not translated that way uh, in other languages. In English, for some reason, it changes that to say there's no way I could know that. Which kind of is the giveaway that that's the one question you're not supposed to know. Otherwise, when he reaches that question in other languages, it just remains, I don't know. The implication being that you don't know the answer, you're admitting that, and he recognizes that you wouldn't know that. Because by the time anyone sealed the portal, uh, the city was pretty much vanquished, and I don't think they ever wrote down who was the one who actually sealed it. Now listen here. A truly evil fellow has gained access to the Temple of Adenos. If you don't let me into the temple right now, it will probably be too late and everything will go down the drain. That cannot be. The High Priest Cardiban and I are the only ones in Jarkanda who know how to open the gate to Adenos' temple. Well, then your pal Cardiban must have blabbed. I'm telling you the gate was open. I saw it myself. Well, there is truth in your voice. I shall no longer doubt your words. I should hope so. Take then the password. It is written on this stone tablet. Speak the words at the sealed gate of the temple, and it will open. My time is done. Alas, I can no longer help you. But... Remember, beware the chambers of Adenos, else your death is certain. Wait, what about the chambers? My strength is failing. Farewell. We shall meet again in the realm of the dead. Now don't you go now, I got more questions for you. Oh. Guess that shall remain a mystery. Oh, they always vanish before they can tell us the really important information. But, well, we know how to get inside. It's given us this doohickey here. An inverted stone tablet. Jehedra Akintar. How interesting. Well, let's get back to Satras and everybody with this information. Whoosh. I have news. Hey. The problem with the temple gate is solved. Has the spirit spoken? 
Yes, he has. Then you know how to get into the temple. Correct. And he also told me what is in the temple. He spoke of a mighty sword and the chambers of Adonos. By Adonos, what fools we are. How could we have been so naive? The hints in the records. This sword can only be the claw of Beliar. We must get through those chambers as soon as possible and take possession of the weapon. What? I don't understand that bit because he never directly mentioned a sword. Did he? I feel like I'm going insane because I this thought crosses my mind every time and I feel like I'm just not paying attention enough. Quarholdra never actually mentions a sword. We only find out about it from the uh, stone tablets. What is the Claw of Beliar? It is the incarnation of evil. Beliar himself created it. Whoever bears it possesses a terrible tool of destruction. The more powerful the bearer is, the mightier the power of the Claw. Only someone who is strong of spirit and steadfast in his faith can withstand its spell. Now it is clear to me why the Builders sealed off this valley. They brought this weapon of evil into their city and fell under its power. These arrogant fools destroyed one another out of greed. The cruelty knew no end until Adonis's wrath swept across the land and sank everything into the sea. Indeed, the creators of the portal did well to hide these things from the rest of the world. And what a tragic end for such a wonderful culture. Do you realize the urgency of our mission now? Raven is a strong fighter and is blinded by his lust for power. In his hand, the claw will be an instrument of destruction. He must not get the weapon or we shall all be lost. You don't say. What are the chambers of Adnos? We now know that the entrance is not the only obstacle that prevents us from entering the depths of the temple. In the temple itself, there are three chambers which are meant to deter all intruders. The colored relics of the builders are the key. Only if we gather all the relics and solve their riddles will we enter the inner sanctum of the temple. I don't know whether Raven was able to decipher the riddles of the temple, but if that is the case, we have a big problem. About the... I'll see whether... Good. So, as May far I as I know... protect you. As far as I know, getting the relics isn't actually necessary to getting in the temple and taking care of business. They're just meant to provide the clues you need to get around the traps, but if you already know the solutions, I don't think you even need them. Let's speak at a uh, mix here. Let him know that his words of wisdom worked. The hell's he run off to? Hey! I've talked to Korhodron. Then you were really able to waken him from the realm of the dead? That's unbelievable. I am more and more amazed by these builders. Who knows what they could have achieved if they still existed today? Probably drowning more places. Anyway, I think that'll do it for now, ladies and gentlemen. I guess, uh... We got some more mansions to snoop around in the next episode, but until then... Thank you all kindly for watching. Don't forget to follow on Twitch if you want to partake in the live stream nonsense. Or... Uh, check out... My Discord, if you want to partake in any of the chat going on there. Otherwise, stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands. See you next time.